Good morning. I'm Pastor Mark Colbo of the Michigan Lutheran Church of Michigan, North Dakota. It's uh, something like 23, 24 below zero outside this morning. And so we are not having service here uh, at the uh, sanctuary in Michigan. We have such a small congregation and uh, when we can... Um, you know, have situations where it's perhaps going to be dangerous wind chills, we'll uh, hunker down at home and uh, have worship. And, and so I'm providing this video here as a substitute for our regular Sunday morning worship. This will be our Sunday morning worship. And uh, uh, happy to be uh, with you all here. It is um, January 2nd of 2022. So as Captain Andy of uh, the, uh, the showboat fame said, Happy New Year. <laughs> okay, uh, in the frivolity, I suppose. Uh, but I wish you all a joyful New Year and a good uh, 2022. Um, it is, uh, as I say, very cold out and has been for a few days, and we have issues here at home even uh, with pipes that are clogging up, or not clogging up, but freezing up. Uh, not dangerously so, but enough to uh, keep us from doing certain things, like washing clothes, and we have to, un uh, we have to thaw those out. Uh, but otherwise, we're, we're doing good. We just came back from Duluth from a vacation and uh, ready to get back in the swing of things, I guess. And so uh, we're continuing our regular uh, videos as well as these, uh, these uh, this special one for Sunday morning. So in a few days, be watching for the Wednesday video. Um the theme, it is the second Sunday after Christmas. And so we will use the propers, the prayers, and the lessons for that that we would have had in the sanctuary. Uh, and I think that I'll have, uh, see if Renee will photograph the pages of the Celebrate folder for your use if you might happen to get those uh, before you see this video. That would be okay. And then next Sunday, we're going to have the same hymns that we would have had in church today, but we'll not have the theme that they normally prescribe for that Sunday of the year, the first Sunday after the Epiphany, which is the baptism of Jesus. Somehow in our narrative on Sunday morning gospel readings, we jump from the Christmas story all the way to when he's some 30 years old and uh, being baptized by John. But we're not going to do that. We'll do actually a celebration of the holiday that actually falls on Thursday of this week, the Epiphany. So next Sunday's lessons and such will be the Epiphany. Because the gospel reading for that story, for that day, is a Christmas story. It is the story of the wise men following the star. And our musicians have picked out special music for that uh, story. So we're going to go with that next Sunday. At the sanctuary, hopefully, it's still going to be pretty cold throughout the week, but not quite as cold as this weekend. And so... We will use, instead of the Eucharist, which we will also have next Sunday, we'll have Holy Communion. So we'll use the service of Holy Eucharist uh, next Sunday. But uh, today we'll use the Matins, the service for morning prayer from the Lutheran Book of Worship, page 131 of your uh, uh, green book. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with singing, thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. The psalm for the day, verses 12 through 20 of Psalm 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened the bars of your gates and blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? Very apt for this morning. The Lord sends forth the word and it melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has done as not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect on your light, or to reflect your light, rather, in all that we do, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of the Lord to Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verses 7 through 14. God promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gifts of food and uh, livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. Here is the word. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company, they shall return here, with weeping they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare in it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. 
They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become a what like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. And they sh then the young women shall rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy, and will I will comfort them, and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of the fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second lesson from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained in an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance in, uh, toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. It is interesting. Uh, well, let's first do the Gospel Canticle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through the uh, holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save the, us from our enemies, from the hands of all who would hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. 
Amen. Our gospel lesson then. And it's interesting because the uh, on the last service we had in our sanctuary was the uh, Christmas Eve service and the Christ Mass service. That was the part of the one that was written uh, that we used uh, ended in the in the uh, candlelight with the reading of the first chapter of the Gospel of Saint John. That is our gospel lesson for today. <laughs> So we're picking up where we left off. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from John, er, from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, dear friends, to me the key is that very last verse. No one has ever seen God God, the only Son, who's close, close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The, Christ, uh, the Christian faith, I think, it's about relationships. It is about our relationship, one with another. It is about our relationship with God. It is about our relationship with creation. Now the thing about relationships is that because we are created beings, we are individuals, or even if you think of broader scope, we are nations of individuals. We are countries of individuals, whole groups and populations of people who are individuals, one from another, and as a whole, 
A group is distant also from other groups. So it's, you might say, each group is an individual, specific and uh, different. And then that, that brings up the troubles of the world, a lot of them, because as individuals, we have distance. We have distinctions that could be good, but also can be great stumbling blocks for getting along in this world. And that's why in, in, um, in our relationships, in our churches, in our marriages, we stress working on our relationships to try and get closer, maintaining boundaries, yes, but also being open and transparent to a great extent, if we can, to being uh, to uh, open to self-disclosure. That's the thing I wanted to say. Self-disclosure, so that we understand and come to understandings with other people, and especially, of course, in the family husbands and wives and parents and children and just having come through the holidays and you know with our extended relations with the in-laws and between the generations and uh, more distant relationships you know the grandparents and grandchildren and and uh, you know, far gone siblings too, and and it can be a tricky business, as we know. If you've had some uh, <laughs> time with your relatives, maybe you felt that, uh, or maybe you've watched the dynamics of family relationships and how people related that often don't see each other very often and. And as they, uh, you know, live apart, of course, they get more distinctive and they have their own lives. And, and then they come together for an extended period of time. Then it gets to be sometimes a little bit um, tenuous. So we have to uh, be kind and understanding and open and loving and share what we feel tactfully, sensitively, kindly. Now, um, why I'm talking about all this is because that's what the gift of Jesus Christ is. You know, this Christmas gift of God's only Son. It is God's self-disclosure. You know, people say, oh, I can worship God and I can know God in, in creation, in nature. You know, out on the tractor, out on the golf course, in the fishing boat, in the bowling alley. You know, wherever you might think you find God. A bowling alley, maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, out in, cre out in nature. But... You have to understand that not all the kindliness and goodness and beauty and bounty that we see in creation is all there is to nature. We've seen fires and blizzards and bone-chilling cold and tornadoes and floods. So yes, there's a lot of harm and and danger too, and negativity in creation. So you don't always know God by his handiwork in creation. Yes, you can say, oh, how beautiful, what a beautiful sunset. But then the storm clouds come and you may wonder, where is God? 
So it is not there that we know God in all of God's goodness and kindness and love. It is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God's self-disclosure. Jesus Christ is God's revelation of himself. Pardon the uh, uninclusive language at that point. I'm used to saying him, meaning the Father and all that. Okay, but uh, it is... Um, it is. It would be hard to know God's own self without knowing the Son, without knowing the Christ, the Word made flesh, living among us, experiencing all the pains and sorrows and joys and temptations, yet without sin, having more uniquely than us uh, the, the ability to, to defeat sin, to keep away from it, though we are called to do our very best. And perhaps Christ offers examples of what to do instead or how to cope with sin. Prayer. Seeking first always the Father's kingdom, God's kingdom. But this is how we know that God above. As our prayers uh, in, in um, for Christmas the day ago, you know, uh, loving the God that we can see so that we can know the God we cannot see. And uh, so that is what uh, our relationship with Christ then should give us a clue to the goodness and mercy and loving kindness always of heavenly being. And so as you continue through the rest of this Christmas season, and it is now, what, the ninth day? Yes, ninth day, because the uh, Wednesday, and we'll talk about it on Wednesday's video, is 12th, the 12th day, 12th night. There's a great tradition of partying and celebration on 12th night before Epiphany comes. But, uh, and then Epiphany is a season of revelation and God manifesting God's self in this world. <clears throat> but overall, it is God the only Son. God's only Son who has made God known. And we look to that as we reflect on the rest of these days of Christmas. Amen. So, let us conclude then our matins. Uh, before I do so, word about the hymns. Now we're going to have hymns. Uh, that's part of the reason why we're going to go with the Epiphany theme next Sunday because we've picked out a whole bunch of wonderful music. Not only some lesser known carols to sing for Christmas, but also some special music for Christmas. The, uh, our music crew has, has come up with some wonderful things. And so that's in fitting in with the Christmas hymn. So it'll be like another Sunday of Christ, Christmas, this uh, Epiphany celebration next Sunday. But one of those carols, as I mentioned, is lesser known, is a new one to us, I think, entirely. And it's a Czech carol. I don't have the name in my head right now, but it's on our Music for Meditation. It's one of the ones on Music for Meditation. So I want you to listen to it. Click on the link. Play it over and over. Get used to it so you can sing it well next Sunday. But also then, for the Music for Meditation, I've also chosen a hymn that we had not picked yet. A uh, beautiful, um, nice, uh, traditional Norwegian 
uh, Christmas Day hymn, uh, The Bells of Christmas, chime once more. And so that's your music for today. But let us conclude our prayers. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray. Almighty God, grant to your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from heaven, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you, and in the confession of your name may abide to the end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stay well. Keep warm.